Over the years, the roles in the field of data have transformed pretty dramatically, but the concepts behind them and what their functions are are pretty much the same. Data has pretty much been around forever, powering our lives, and starting in the early 60s, companies actually began to look at ways to organize this information and then make something useful of it. Going into the 90s, we had a new concept called star scheme, as we'll touch on here in a minute. And then in 2000, with the boom of the internet, is when we were introduced to this concept of big data. So the original idea, and this came from Bill Inman, was that a subject of oriented, non-volatile, integrated time variant collection of data in support of a management's decisions is a data warehouse. That's the idea behind it. And that is uh, an incredibly kind of jargony technical way of saying you wanted to model your data in a way that mirrored your business. So when it came to asking questions using this data, it all made sense and aligned perfectly. Now, this became incredibly difficult, and data warehousing actually got a pretty bad rap because of this. The projects would take forever, they would run on, and they would actually never be finished. And then as businesses and technology advanced and became more rapidly changing, this model just simply couldn't keep up. And that's when we have Dr. Ralph Kimball, who came in in the 90s with his book, The Data Warehouse Toolkit, which introduced a similar idea that was just a bit smaller and easier to manage. And this was what we call a star schema. And in this model, you have essentially a mini data warehouse for each business process, and they share some common data sets. Collectively, these are known as star schemas, and they eventually make up your entire business, but are much more flexible and easier to build. Let's look at an example here. So in this little star schema, we're looking at the sales process. So we have a table. Imagine this is just a location where we put data. And every time we have a sale, we log it here. We, we write it down. We put it into a spreadsheet, essentially. Then from there, we want to look at the sales by, let's say, the customer. And we want to figure out who actually bought what. Well, we need to know where those customers are located. So maybe we have a separate way of looking at sales, which is by region. And if we want to know maybe who made that sale, what team they're a part of, what group they're in, what location they're in, we could add another table here for salesperson. And if we wanted, of course, to look at sales over time, how they were last year compared to this year, we would need a separate table for that as well. Lastly, making up our mini star schema here, we have the product, what actually was sold. And so the idea was to structure a mini data warehouse around a single business process like you're seeing here. And in the middle, that light blue is the fact records, the fact tables, as you may see them referred to. These are, in this case, just transactions, just logs of what happened. And then pointers to all the other relevant dimensions. That's what you're seeing, kind of the light purple here. Now, these dimensions and facts make up a star-like shape that made it really Really easy for analysts to query and ask questions and get answers of this data and help the business grow. Meanwhile, if the customer data changed or maybe we needed to add a new dimension here, this was a very small, very tenable kind of thing that we could just we could just modify. It wasn't nearly as robust and as complex as a full-blown Inman style data warehouse, but we could get it done in a short period of time and start getting value out of it, which is what businesses wanted. And around then is when we started to hear the term business intelligence in kind of common speak in corporate America. Now, business intelligence is essentially the same thing as we may call data science nowadays or data analytics. However, back then, it was still kind of a niche area that was more IT than it was business. And this was the first time we tried to bridge those gaps. And with the advent of the star schema, the practice of structuring your data in a way to ask questions of was becoming more and more prevalent. So Ralph Kimball actually really propelled this part of the industry and part of business as it is today forward, making it possible for a lot of us to do our jobs in a much more effective way. Now, we also started to see new tools come out that changed how all these things work. 
Statisticians started running algorithms on large data sets to predict future outcomes. Analysts were typically confined to Excel. We're now writing SQL code against databases and creating visual ways for folks to interact. And engineers were helping set up and manage all of these things so that the analysts and statisticians, or now we may call them data scientists, were able to be more effective. And these roles all kind of blended together into what is essentially now a data ecosystem or a data team. So since these roles have been blurred and they've kind of morphed and evolved over time, I've done a lot of research prior to making this course. So in addition to my body of knowledge, just from my own experience, which is gathered from consulting across many different industries and many different companies, I've interviewed a lot of folks recently in the industry today to make sure that I had all the most updated information for you. So let's take a look essentially at how the technology stack in this field works and then how the roles map to that stack. At the base layer, you have the data platform, and I'm generalizing here as the place where everyone in the data org goes to get data for their work. We'll dig into this more later, but for now, just imagine it's like a grocery store filled with all the stuff you could want for whatever occasion. From there, we have our analysis layer. This is where taking our fresh data from the platform, applying some business logic and adding relevant context, we're able to deliver some really good prepared meals for our users to consume. Following with the grocery store analogy, this is our backyard barbecue with some hamburgers and hot dogs or tofu dogs if you're into that kind of thing, you know, and some nice beverages, a very simple but still very fulfilling meal. But what if our users have a more refined palate? Well, then we need to introduce some more advanced ways of analyzing the data, such as statistical modeling and forecasting. Here is where you get your data science layer. And this is the smaller, the less generally used, but also critically important processes and ways of turning this data into something valuable. So let's see now how the roles in the data field map to this technology layer here. The foundation of the data org is built by the data engineering team. In this role, you would be interfacing with the teams that manage where data is created. So your software development teams, your app dev teams, or even your system teams that manage systems that are provided by third party vendors, as well as some analyst groups and your data science team, because they are essentially your customers. You'll be responsible for handling all the data coming into your platform, ensuring its quality, its accuracy, its completeness, and then making it easy for all of the analysts and scientists to consume that data and use it. From there, data analysts take this data, they apply business logic and add some relevant context to help teams understand what's going on, and they present it and provide it to those frontline teams in a way that makes their workflows more efficient or helps them find new opportunities or ways to grow. I've seen this work best when the data presented lives directly in line with the tools they're using. For example, if you're supporting the sales team and you want to integrate some data into their workflow, you're likely going to want to put that data directly into their customer relationship management or CRM tool. This way, they don't have to step outside of their normal workflow. Their job, again, is to make sales. They don't have to leave that process to then use your analysis and benefit from it. It really needs to be integrated directly into whatever tools and whatever platforms they use to do their work. Now, data analysis is probably the easiest role to get started in, and the tools for it are becoming very accessible. If you know basic Excel skills, you can really quickly transition to a lot of the really powerful tools that data analysts use on a regular basis. This leaves our data scientists, who are the ones preparing the forecasts, the predictions, and generally the more specific answers to complex questions. I like to think of data scientists as the special forces on the team. When a problem has many angles that all need to be carefully considered in a model, and the answer to a question needs to be statistically valid, you need a data scientist. The reason I say there are these special forces is because most businesses don't need a big group of data scientists. A lot of the business questions that you have on a day-to-day -day basis or at that operational or tactical level can be answered by a good data analyst. And that is a really effective, really ground level kind of role that I think a lot of people will be able to start with and then grow from. The data scientists are the ones handling the bet the company decisions, the ones that really take a long time to study because the answer needs to be super specific and accurate. 
And to be clear, I'm describing what I've witnessed in my career with all the companies I've consulted at and worked at. Now, some other companies will have a totally different mix of these roles. A really advanced company like Netflix will say, will probably have a lot of data scientists working on things like complex algorithms integrating into their actual product feed. Whereas a typical retail company or someone like that won't necessarily need that many people doing things at that high level, at that level of precision. And more likely what they'll need are people on the analyst side answering questions much quicker and with just kind of a much more simple look at things that will help guide their business. So both roles are incredibly valuable. And depending on the type of industry that you're in or how the company works, you will have a varying mix of all of these different roles roles within your data team. And this brings us to a role which isn't often discussed in the data team, but one that I think is super important. And this is the data product manager. Now, when I say product manager, what I'm talking about are data products. And you can think of a data product as anything from a written report from an analyst or a data scientist with a specific question that they were answering to a tool that supports a team and is making them more self-sufficient. Anything in between is what I would call a data product. Now, the data product manager is someone that really kind of binds all this together and is sort of the glue of the group. They bring together the right people at the right time to make the product successful successful. And of course, a background in data would be very helpful because then they would have this domain expertise. And when working with end users and trying to translate that into something to for a data engineer, let's say, they would be really benefiting by any kind of prior knowledge or experience in that area. And as a last bit, I just wanted to mention that you'll hear different terms for these roles. Now, the terms I'm using are the ones that are kind of the most modern right now, but they will probably change down the road. However, the functions and the concepts behind them are pretty consistent. And those things have been around, as I mentioned earlier, for a long time. So let's keep going down our journey here and dig into each one of these roles a bit more in depth to understand exactly what they do. I hope that lesson was helpful to you. If you want to learn more and continue this journey, head over to freethedataacademy.com slash YT to see our entire catalog and sign up for a seven-day free trial so you can start learning today to elevate your career tomorrow.